Go ahead. Okay, this is uh, Gary Shusak. We're here at Montana today after a class, and we're talking to uh, Tony McLaughlin, who's an alumni, sure we don't know glory years and how people are, saw all the best people we have, and has gone on to a lot of success in uh, film, TV, acting, and just find out um, what's he doing and how he got there and, and what his uh, plans are. So, Tom, tell us a little bit about what you did after you left Sherwood Oaks and what happened there. Well, I mean, the great thing about Sherwood Oaks was uh, my ability to actually connect with the real people of the, of the industry mm -hmm. as opposed to teachers that wanted to do right. it or, you know, tried right. to do it. And, you know, everybody you had was incredible. I mean, the, you know, Martin Scorsese came in at one point and showed us Alice doesn't live here anymore and then said, okay, let's talk about this. What did you like? What didn't you like? Or John Cassavetes came in and showed us A Woman Under the Influence. And I remember there was this movie, he said, we we're going to go down and see, and this, this actor made this movie, and, you know, it was kind of a buzz about it and stuff, and it was Rocky, you know, with S Stallone. And, uh, you know, I got a directing class from Urban Kirshner, you know, learned editing from uh, John Carpenter and um, Dan O'Bannon. I mean, everybody who came in uh, was just, you know, industry greats, and people both in... Uh, distribution as well as production and actors and writers and directors. I mean, it was just, you learned about every aspect of the business. And then I got a chance to, you know, direct some or, or do some actual uh, comedy improv classes for you as well for the actors. So, you know, it was a way of kind of being connected to the school as well as, you know, being the student there. Once I was finished, I, you know, we had Sid Field too before his book came out. Right. Uh, kind of trying out his theories and things, and that motivated me to write my first screenplay, which, you know, I learned a lot from, and then the next screenplay, and then the next screenplay, and then finally, you know, writing a horror, you know, low-budget horror movie, which was the beginning of my career, and it was, I guess, from the time of Sherwood Oaks to the time that movie was made, it's just about three years or so, um, which at the time seemed long, but now when I look at things, it's, it wasn't at all. I was very, very fortunate. And, you know, one movie led to the next movie, which was the Friday the 13th, um, Jason Lives, and then to a romantic comedy for Dino De Laurentiis, and another film for Dino, and then it was all television, you know, all TV movies and miniseries and pilots and things, and, um, you know, it's been an amazing ride, but, uh, you know. So you feel it was like you were a sponge waiting to soak up information, and you found the right place for mm -hmm. your right situation, right. and you used the confidence or the information or the ability to talk to these people who are really doing it to make you feel like you could go that step because you saw the best people talking about their wares and what they yeah. did. And you felt when you could see yourself doing that realistically enough. And a lot of it wasn't always positive. A lot of people came in and said, this is a lousy business and yeah. I suggest you go someplace else. You did. But it didn't scare me as much as it made me realize, okay, there's this few that get in there. Why can't I be one of those few? You know, and if you learn to get enough scar tissue, from rejection and things, then rejection doesn't hurt after a while. And again, you've got to hear enough people talk about it and be impassioned and also be upset on the bad days. I mean, it's all, it's life, but at the same time, it's, it's a dream and a goal that, you know, I think so much of it came out of Sherwood Oaks Club, just the people that just made me feel absolutely elated about the possibilities and the things that can happen, you know, as a filmmaker. Do you remember the one project that you finally got to in charge of that made you feel it looks like you're that one in the industry? Of my one of my own personal yeah. projects? Yeah, remember that happened after a show where it made you like, think I'm now going to have a career. I feel that somehow it probably, and I didn't know it at the time, was the Friday the 13th that I did because, it, you know, at the time it was, an, it was kind of an assignment. I mean, I had to create an original screenplay for it. I asked if I could put comedy in it, which nobody had done at that point. And when I first like showed it to an audience, you know, we had a preview audience, and they went crazy, I went, you know what, I think I can do this. And that was when I got enough guts to put a down payment on a house and go, okay, you know, this is the house that Jason will build, and managed to be able to, you know, stay in that house for 25 years so far. Um, and trying to find work in any way I could without compromising, you know, my own ethics about the kinds of movies I wanted to do, and uh, I've been very blessed to be able to do a lot of different types of, of movies, and so what, it's not just horror or just comedy. What led you getting that assignment, by the way? Um, the very first film I did, One Dark Night, uh, got over to uh, Frank Mancuso, Jr., and they were looking
looking for a writer director for the next Friday. And basically, as my agent said, you know, this is going to be in 1,800 theaters at the end of, you know, of the summer. You know, this is this is a chance to really, you know, put your voice into it. And uh, you know, I ran with the ball, and it and it did work. And it's amazing still to this day how many fan letters I get on a weekly basis worldwide. So, um, well, this is uh, very helpful that you've come back to moderate, and you feel it's like sort of an echo in the past. You're, you're now working, and you're coming back as a some seasoned veteran, and you're seeing people, some new people showed up, and you see how they're acting, how they're responding, maybe how they're gaining the type of things you gain. Yeah, and it's also a giving back. I mean, I, I believe in this industry, those of us who really care, when we get to a certain point, we want to encourage the next person yeah, next group. and I mean certain people feel threatened by that but to me at every generation I learn from what th their new ideas are you know I can certainly lose a lot of jobs to the next kid out of film school because he's not done anything that hasn't right. you know screwed up and a lot of our business is about the promise that you have especially when you're young and then as time goes on you know your experience and stuff allows you to try different things and feel a little more confident about what it is when uh, you know you get a job and what you've got this much money and you got this much time, how do you make that movie work? So uh, again, uh, coming back here and seeing all the fresh faces and people that have that same passion, you know, it, it makes me feel very hopeful too for the future film. Well, glad you got something out of our school, and thank God you came back and talked to our group and and uh, you inspire them too. So thanks for coming. My pleasure.